Hello, my wonderful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or anytime you are coming across my platform, Linda's TV Show. If it is your first time and you like what you are watching, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. YouTube, I want to appreciate you for creating this wonderful platform for us to use to disseminate information I always put a disclaimer that this platform, Linda's TV show, do not and will not promote violence, hate speech, misleading information, or what I view. We are here to educate, inform the members of the public about the happening, and also to remind YouTube that a call for self-determination is not a call for what? War. Some of the motions and bills that you have moved on the floor is sometimes what a federal lawmaker will move in four years. I mean, or more, or two terms, but you've done that. I'm quite interested in the relevance of some of these bills to our present situation. Interestingly, uh, you and your colleagues screened and grilled uh, the, the man to replace uh, Bert Redu, and you are one person who is saying that uh, you moved a, a bill for the creation or the removal of the humanitarian affairs or this handout uh, to re be replaced by a particular uh, uh, agency. Mm -hmm. How do you think that can work? Are you saying the present structure is not working? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's just a, a big coincidence that today we screened the minister who is coming to replace better edu and i listened attentively to the first question that was asked of him i never met him before but i was very impressed very impressed that he he offered a solution going forward he he realizes that that ministry has been bedeviled with corruption and other practices uh, that so much so that um, they've never been able to reach the masses the poor the vulnerable the disabled all those people and you know from from his answers, I I believe that we can work together, because what he has made clear to us today is that he wants to run a data driven ministry, and he went on to explain how this will work, almost like what I have proposed in my bill, which is that we should have data of everybody from the units, as he put it, which is the correct, uh, correct thing to do, to the wards, to the local governments, and to the states. What, in simple terms, what he said today is that there should be data of database for everybody. But that, what you are proposing is an oh, agency called NSSA, the National, National Social Sec Security Precisely. Agency. This agency will, of course, work effectively um but as, as, I, as i was saying to you the the minister the minister that he, he is now he's yeah. is, is been confirmed today so he's, he's a minister he what he did was to emphasize on those things that i've been advocating for which is that which which was not done before which is to identify those who are in need from their various communities and as against what is happening now or what has been happening before. You know, we have budgeted so much money in billions, hundreds of billions to this agency, to this um, uh, ministry in the past. And, they, and how, how does it work in the past? They simply get senators, House of Rest members, or, and others to nominate beneficiaries. And, and this doesn't go, go down to the real people who need it. But the corruption, Senator, are you aware of what is said about the history of humanitarian ministry? The I'm kind coming, of deep corruption I'm that coming, goes on, I'm how coming, it serves the interests of, of some political and traditional rulers' uh, interests. That, that's why I've been up against it, against the ministry itself. But I'm just telling you now that with what the minister just told us to, that he is prepared to do, which is in tandem with what I am proposing. Look, what am I proposing? In putting single layman's term, first, is that we must have a national database that captures everybody, whoever you are. 
from Mr. President to the bricklayer, from the ministers to the teachers, from the soldiers to the uh, um, uh, accountants. Everybody should be captured within that database so that we begin to know those who are in dire need of support. And these people should be able to receive some amount of money every month, as of right, without them knowing anybody. What, con what, what, what constitutional provision will back that, if it's of, as of right? It's a bill. I've just told you, it's a bill. Good governance is about providing for the people, isn't it? But it will be the act of the National Assembly. That's what I'm telling you, that, have, that my bill seeks to do. My bill seeks to make it a law, an act, to have this data-driven agency automatically when you fall within that bracket uh -huh. money comes to you money comes to you without me knowing you or without you knowing anybody it's just the fact that you are in a local village does this work in any part of the world that you know oh, yeah it works in england works in america works in france works in japan works in every other do we have what it takes to be able to do, what does it take to, to functionalize this what does it take it's just just some level of technical database isn't it which is what this guy talked about today that you're going to use database it's all about database. It's all about capturing every individual in Nigeria. Those who are working and those who are not working. Those who are sick from those who are not sick. And, and then being able to understand that for those who are not working, those who are vulnerable, those who are disabled, those who have suffered some other infirmity because of accident or whatever, who are not able to continue to work, that they receive money as of right from the government. So there should be money in that fund, not share, you don't carry money because uh, some governor uh, likes you or some senator likes you, they will nominate you and then you get some hundred thousand uh, dollars in a, in a month, a, a one of payment. All I'm saying is that the system has to be transparent. So what we have now is a failure. Oh, it is. There is no there, transparency, there is no, there is, no accountability. There is none. There is none. So people don't. There's no governance in terms of, uh, you know, helping the poor. We've run a system Let me that, tell you. that lack data, Let me tell uh, you. Senator. No, Where do we start from? <laughs> that's something that the, the, the minister said something today that I applauded. I never thought that we could have a minister who understands what, needs, what has to be done. So, but hearing him today talk to us, for about 30 minutes, and then going through his resume. I think he has a PhD in, uh, in engineering. So, so he understands the essence of data. And all we just need to do is to give him all the support that, it is, that is needed so that the relevant agencies and ministries will begin to compile the list of Nigerians. Part, but part of what you are su suggesting mm -hmm. also is that every Nigerian, through that bill, which you call the National Social Security Agency uh, Bill, and if passed into law, every Nigerian will have an identity of course, captured, yes. of course, known. Of course. And in that in that case, uh, is it similar to the NIN? The NIN is just one of those numbers that could be used to establish this. You know, um, and there are other 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 ways of doing it, but federal government has to set up. A, a, a database um, agency, you know, that will, we, do, we, we have to work with a verifiable information, with an, an acceptable and known information. So if somebody, let me just go back to this again, if somebody is disabled and they are not able to work and they are in your village, how, do, how would they get to your senator or the House of Rest member to give them that allowance? that they need to survive, to eat, and, and pay some bills, they would never be supported by anybody. So those are the people that we should target in, 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 in advancing this country. We must look at those who are really in need. And that, there are many of them. But the, the fact is that this ministry has never addressed that. What the ministry has done before, let me tell you what they've done before. They simply just get some consultant here and there to help them to compile a list of names and then 100 billion is made available to them, and they, they, they decide as to who they give this 100 billion to, uh, mainly to their families or their friends or those who support them, but not to those who need it. So the, the, the point is that, and when that is done, those people who get those money, they are, they are just beneficiaries of goodwill from the, those who put them there. 
But this agency that I'm proposing now, what it does is to identify those people who are statutorily, statutorily, uh, and who are statutorily entitled. Entitled, yeah. Entitled so it becomes uh, of rights. Now, the, the, the question is, we have multiplication, duplication of identities. Yes. Your driver's license, and in other crimes, you only need one identity. But I think uh, they can use NIN. The NIN. To unify them. To unify them. Yeah, because that, 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 the, that, you have the BVN as an identity, yes. you have the NIN as an identity, you have the, your, your international and, passport, and I, no, no, you no, have no, the... You, 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 cannot, have the, you the, cannot rely on the passport or the... Or the, or the no, because... Or, or driver's license. If you... Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, if you, you are talking about... Those. No, the point I'm making is mm -hmm. this. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the solution and where we start from. We have mm -hmm. multiplication yeah, of yeah. all of these identities. Mm -hmm. What you are proposing is mm -hmm. one identity yes. for a Nigerian, for which will capture everybody. your social status in, in, in the country. In the country. So, so that, if, do we then are. collapse? I, I know because well, has your data. Yes, uh, yes. The driver and um, uh, what's it called? The traffic guys also have your, yes, your data. That is because nothing, so everybody nothing, has data. Nothing has worked. No unification. Yes. So we must start from the unification of identities. Yes. yes. And we, it, we, it's we looking must, like a security must, matter, isn't it? It is. It is. So whoever you well you are, even if you are you are wanted by the police, it will be there. If you are wanted by customs or you have been evading tax, it will be there. You know. So when they put your name, Sharon. It will, uh, you, your details will come up. So everybody who is looking for you wants to know who you are, what you are, stand for, it will be there. And with that, they can plan Nigeria. Mm. We can begin to plan for the most vulnerable, for the most uh, poor in our society. How urgent do you think this should be done? I, like yesterday. Let me you take know, you to one thing like, also. Like, oh, let let yeah. me tell you, yeah. I understand that some, some, most, some more money is being released to the ministry and all. No. Before they start releasing money, let's just, this can be done so quickly. Let's fix it first. Yes, we can get uh, um, uh, 36 experts or 37 experts. I say, you go and handle Delta. You go and handle uh, Le uh, Lagos State. You go and handle, and then they, they bring them together. Because that, that, that looks like a more uh, kind of sensors, quasi sensors. It is. Yeah, it and is. data capturing. It is, and it's, so, and it's, it's going to be biometrics also. Biometrics, of course, and it will be reliably used for anything. Verification. For, for anything. Yeah. You know? Uh, there, there, there is something that, 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 I mean, because this has security implication, this also has economic implication. You have also moved a bill uh, for the prohib uh, prohibition of foreign currency use in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's actually captured in the CBN Act. The usage of foreign currency for transaction in Nigeria is illegal. But yet, people still use it for school fees, for hospital bills, and all whatnot. That what you are proposing isn't going to be duplication for what is already no, 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 obtained no. in the CBN Act. No, no, no. It's an amendment to the Act. Um, the, the fact is that our economy, as it is, is in, is in tatters. It is in some kind of uh, quagmire, if I may use that word. Um, and it doesn't matter how you look at it. It doesn't matter what policies they try to introduce here and there. Nothing will work. Nothing will work as long as we keep tying the level of uh, uh, exchange rate to our consumptions. Nothing will work. Let me tell you, let me just try and break it down to you. To you. you know, when we became an independent nation, we had Naira. And... Our currency was quite strong. Then suddenly, we began to have other currencies, dollars particularly, and pounds, and now, of course, euro. There is no country that I know in the world that has the use of multiple currencies. Every country, Britain, they use pounds, America uses dollars, France uses euro. Now, if you go to any of those countries and you have, for example, you go to UK and you have dollar, you must change it at the BDC. You cannot pay for anything in dollars in UK. Everybody is paid their salaries in pounds in UK. The same thing you go to America, everybody uses dollars. So, for this to work, assuming that we agree, you know, all of us agree that we should prohibit the use of foreign currency in Nigeria, 
what it means that if somebody is coming to buy oil or buy gas or buy gold in Nigeria, they'd be required to use only Naira Naira as a form of transaction. Yes. So if they're coming from UK, for example, what they must do is to look for Naira. So that they can transact. They can transact. Because they know they cannot use any other currency. So they must look for there are those who will say that it's, Listen to it's, me, please. it's, it's execution of I mean, it. No, no, that, no. That, that, that law is also no, in the threat. No, no, it, let me just, let me, let me just give you, yeah. complete with the, with the examples. So if they come to, if they want to transact with, uh, with uh, any other currency in Nigeria, they cannot. So they must look for Naira. Currently, nobody looks for Naira because we have made it so easy for them to transact with, with other currencies. Do you understand it? There, there's no obligation for them to look for um, any other currency other than their own. So they can come here with any currency, and that means effectively that there, there, are, there are no global demands for our Naira. So given the scenario, if this law is passed, what it means that anybody who needs to transact with Niger Nigeria must use foreign Oh, sorry, uh, just, just uh, Naira. Must, must use uh, Naira. So there, there will be a demand or demands for Naira in those countries. Do you understand that? Mm. It means that when there's demand for Naira, what happens to it? There will be a rise in the value of Naira. Because currently there's no demand for Naira anywhere. Even if you carry a, a truckload of Naira to uh, Heathrow Airport or anywhere in, in UK, what happens to that? Is that there is no need for it. People will tell you there is no value for it. So you, you have no value. Our, mo our money has no value beyond Naira, beyond Nigeria. So for this to work, what we need to do is just to prohibit the use of foreign currencies. And when that, when that happens, people will begin to look for Naira. When they look for Naira, they, you will see, the, you see the currency appreciate. And when it's appreciate, appreciate you can take Naira to UK and you change it at the airport, you know, because they need Naira. They know that the businessmen who are coming to transact business in Nigeria need Naira. So they'll, they'll be happy to take Naira from you to keep mm. for future transactions. But now they don't have any need for Naira. Can that fix our economic problem? Oh, yes, it can. That is, that, this is the solution. This is the simple solution. You cannot go to Morocco, for example, and, and use any other currency other than dirham, the local currency. Is it, I mean, is it difficult to understand that, okay, take for, for instance, how our economy has been bastardized. We sell our crude oil in, in dollars. Then CBN takes this crude oil and, and we sell it to, uh, you know, um, some speculators. Then you have what they call parallel market. Some official, the other one unofficial, involving dollars. Parallel market has to do with official, with dollars, isn't it? So why do you need a parallel market in your own country? Why would you need to subject your own currency to this simulation where, you know, you you are allowing the other currencies to box into a corner? Nobody, <laughs> nobody respects Naira. Senator, is not going to be uh, an oversimplification of the problem, uh, economic problems of Nigeria because uh, there is a fiscal. Uh, aspect of the economy and uh, the, the other aspect that, that those who believe that one singular action of the president, the removal of fuel subsidy, is uh, is a major uh, effect or that has major effect implication for the economy, the fl flotation of the naira, the unification of, of the currency windows, and and a, a few Mr. other president, decisions. Mr. President has been trying to do that through some unification of uh, the 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 the, yeah. the, the, the rate. Yeah. That is a, it's, it, that's one step in the right direction. He has also taken another step based on I, what something that I have been advocating for, which, which is that anybody who wants to buy uh, crude oil must pay for it for him in Naira. In Naira. I've, been, I've been talking about this. So the EFCs, for example, they've also said that uh, um, you can't transact you know, uh, uh, some other uh, businesses in Nigeria with Naira. But, but it has to be a wholesome approach. Now, Take, as I said to you before, workers, foreign workers in Nigeria, all foreign workers in Nigeria are paid in what? In foreign currencies. Why, why on Nigerian soil. On Nigerian soil. That is discriminatory. That is unacceptable. 
Because if you, as I said, if you go to other current countries in France, it doesn't matter who you are. You are paid in euro. Again, you go to UK. You are paid in pounds. It doesn't matter what work you do. Mm -hmm. You go to, uh, UK, uh, to America, you are paid in dollars. So it doesn't matter who you are. So we must unify our currency. We, we must seek to protect our currency. And this is something that has to be done with the, uh, with the prohibition of the use of other currencies. Just take, for example, I mean, most people have uh, 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 foreign currencies in, in, in their local accounts here. We don't need to have that. That also has to be prohibited. All these uh, people who have uh, um, uh, you will know that this is the biggest problem we have. It is not oversimplification. It is the fact that when you stop the use of other currencies and also stop the importation of goods, then you begin to promote local... Did you hear what Dangote said yesterday? Let Senator. me finish, please. You, 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 start, you start to protect local companies, local industries, local manufacturers, local producers. But you must take a step in doing this. I, I know some people say, but how can you prohibit everything? We can prohibit virtually everything except for those very limited essential, essential things that are, you know. So as far as you're components. concerned, most of these luxury items should be, oh, banned. should be banned. Anything that we cannot uh, produce, we should, we should forget it. We should forget it, yes. It will you know, force us to look, look inwards. Look inwards and begin to manufacture, I, I, look, begin to produce. And these are all part of the bill that I... I, I put are you that. worried about what Dangote said yesterday, for example? He said he has about a billion yeah. uh, uh, um, um, worth of um, uh, fuel, refined product mm -hmm. in his uh, storage. Mm -hmm. And he was begging the marketers, NNPCL, that they should uh, uh, patronize him. Does it bother you? It, that it, we, it does. They just want one single solution to that. In line with what I've said before, what, what the government must do is to prohibit the importation of crude or refined products into Nigeria. We cannot continue to import anything and expect something different from, uh, the, to happen in the, in the economy. So what has to be done is just to prohibit the use of, the, the importation of re refined products. People are still importing refined products. They're still competing with Dangote. So we must protect that industry, that, that um, um, uh, uh, refinery. And then we must also take steps to repair the other government-owned refineries across the country. We have no reason whatsoever. This is the only country that's oil and gas producing that's importing refined products. I, 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 and your state, for example, is one major... And I've heard uh, uh, some, some of your comments that you've made about governance in your state, for example. Yeah. The Okwai uh, 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 power plant. Of course, yes. You, you've also talked about accountability. Of course, in yes. In uh, the kind of money. You said what your state delta has received put, to get, uh, put together, the allocation is more than uh, this whole southeast region. Of course, yes. It, and that, the, those who believe that maybe you have a personal grouse against no, the governor. I don't have any... It's, uh, I mean, I, I, I worked for his election. I worked for his nomination. I worked for his election. We've been, we've been friends. But beyond that, I, I, have, uh, I have my um, obligation to my constituents, those that, I, those that I elected me. They are asking for power supply. And we have the source of power supply. It's just to step it down. So the state government cannot tell me, oh, it's a federal government's duty. It is not federal government's duty. It is your duty to step it down because this is something that will affect the populace, our people. Is the governor listening to you? <laughs> Look, whether he listens or not, the people will listen and the people will know what to do. You know, so we need to have power supply that is constant for our people and the power plant is there. No, that my power plant is there supplying about 1,000 megawatts of light to the national grid. Oh, yet the people, the people are living in, under in, the plant in total, in total are in darkness. darkness. Total darkness. So what the government needs to do is to pay the contractors who have been, the contractors have been actually been awarded to some companies by federal government, pay them to complete the step down. With that, you have com complete power supply in the the, the argument as to, oh, it's the federal government's job to do, federal government will not do it. Because if they do, if they look, the agreement is that 
there should be 100 megawatts taken from that 1,000. So if they take 100 megawatts from that 1,000, it would mean less for Abuja. It would mean less for Anambra State. It would mean less for Kogi State. So the federal, federal government is not in a hurry so you, to, 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 to do the step down because they know that, that there will be some kind of deficit. So the state government might as well pay for it. But if they don't want to pay for it, I've told them, look, I have got two companies that are willing to fund it. All they just want is a guarantee from the state government that the, their investment will be safe. Secured. So that they can pay for the step down and then get their money from billions over time. 20 years, 25 years. You have questioned so and queried the, the performance of Governor uh, same, Sharif of, of no, Hold on, hold on. The same, same thing with the, with the, with the, uh, with the water, uh, the, the dam in Oguashiku. This dam has been built, completely built by federal government. Now, federal government has said to us, uh, you know, it's now for your government to do the water retrogulation. And it's not been done. For over 10 years that the dam has been built, this has not been done. I mean, I couldn't have spoken to any other governor before. Oh, yes, I Senator. I, 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 aren't you able to, put, to, to do it as, uh, as your own uh, constituency project? No. We're Is not, it possible? What type of something you, you would take about 25 billion, 30 billion? No constituency project. Not even the Senate president can afford to do that. So it's something. What we need is either the state government to put in money to do it or allow to some financiers to do it and collect money from the billions to the people. If you don't do this... I mean, so what are you doing? What, what is the sense of governance? Senator Nwoko, you have queried the performance of the Delta State governors, uh, Governor Sheriff of Oberivory, and you, you've, you've said that in the utilization of the funds and the allocation available to Delta State, you've really seen less of work being used, I mean, uh, being done by the, for, uh, from the money accrued to the state. Yeah. Are you able to validly uh, uh, substantiate your claim? It's very simple. It's very simple. Before I went public on this, the governor's people have come to gone public to say that uh, the state was owing um, some billion, hundreds of billions of, of naira, and that the governor has been able to pay about uh, just about uh, less than 200, 200 billion out of it. So it's in the public glare. Like everybody knows. His media people have gone out to say this anyway. That they are that, that the state has a huge debt profile and that they are paying so much, they pay so much, and that they continue to pay service and debt. So, but that is not my problem, because every government can borrow. If they have, if they have such um, revenue every month from the foundation account, uh, and uh, so much of it goes towards servicing of these loans, it does not stop them from borrowing to meet the needs of the people. And how, how do I explain to my people? That, sorry, we can't do the water for you. We can't do the light for you. We can't do the road for you because the government is paying debts incurred by previous governments. Is that an explanation? So there's a pressure from your people? Of course, yes. And you are also asking for the creation of annual mass state. Yeah. Is that possible? It is very possible. How? Wow. What is the need? Well, the need is for self-determination. Let me tell you this. Um, we, I, I represent nine local government areas. My constituency is made up of nine local government areas. Out of these nine local government areas, six of them are oil and gas producing. We are predominantly an agri agricultural uh, Agrarian, uh, uh, yeah. people. And, uh, we, but of course, some of it have been uh, devastated through oil and oil pollutions. But to have a state is something that our ancestors, our people have been clamoring for for over 50 years. We are the Anyomas, are Igbos. Likely Igbos. So you want to be the sixth Southeast state? We will be the sixth Indigo state. Because, I mean, we are, we are getting the support from Southeast. The fact is that federal government is going to create one state. They will create one state. But that one state to be created to assuage the Igbos because they've been marginalized, as you know. Southeast is the only, uh, the only part of Nigeria. Marginalized? Uh -huh. Of course, yeah. Look. You are, you are talking as if you are not part of Nigeria. Southeast is the only uh, uh, zone that has five states. Others have six states, except Northwest that has seven. You don't call that being marginalized. Isn't it, why, how do you determine? So if an Elma state come on stream, that, uh, that will erase that. And if you also look, listen to the youth who are, who are uh, 
killing and, and, and maiming. Why, why, what are they clamoring for? Those who are in IPOB or, I, or um, uh, ESN and, and the rest of them, what are they clamoring for? What, what, what are their outcries? They're talking about being marginalized. And one of those areas of being marginalized is that they have fewer states than others. So if we are on the other side, the Igbos on the other side of, uh, of the river, what they call us uh, Bendel Igbos or, or Western Igbos, and, uh, if we also have uh, a state that could become the sixth state of Southeast, or even if it's going to be uh, seven states in, in, in uh, South, in, in South, South, at least uh, the fact is that the, the average Igbo person will feel okay. Something is being done for us. All right. Uh, Senator, we are totally out of time. But there is a controversial bill that you have moved for the, every Nigerian to be able to carry arms. America is suffering from that particular uh, uh, policy. And now Senator Ned Nwoko is uh, clamoring for the problem, the age-long disaster happening in the United States to be localized here in Nigeria. We just have 30 seconds. Uh, do you still think that that's to solve our security problem? Oh, it will. It will. Look, let me tell you this. My SLA was killed in November last year. And the wife told the story. The wife said that the estate was attacked by um, uh, some kidnappers. They were going from house to house. And they knew they were coming to them, but they couldn't do anything. When they got to their door, they literally had to, they literally wanted to knock down the door, but the, my SLA, who is late now, said to the wife, look, you go and hide somewhere. Let me talk to them. Uh, of course, the wife and the kids went to hide under the uh, bed in one of the rooms. When he went to open the door, he was taken. And we never saw him alive. Nobody saw him again. As a matter of fact, those people who took me away have been arrested. And the body of my uh, SLA was also recovered by the police. Now, if he had a gun, or if members of the community, or those people in, in those uh, in that estate had guns. You think the, um, the um, kidnappers would have had the audacity to be knocking from door to door, knowing that uh, people are armed? That wouldn't happen. But look, right. it's not as easy as that. For you to have the license to have a gun, one, right. you must go through a training school. Sanitary. Listen, you, you, must give me, you must go through a training school, a shooting school, which is a training school. You must get a, a, a confirmation from uh, two doctors that you have sound mind. You must get reports from uh, the DSS and from the police, you must also be, be confirmed by your local traditional ruler that, are you totally are, out of that you are who you are. All right. So, <laughs> it's not just about, about... Yeah. Senator Nedun Woko is a senator representing the Outer State in the National Assembly. Thank you so much for all of these plenty of views and motion that you have moved. Good work. Thank you so much indeed. For... Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.